All right, right here at the Republican Convention in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, with a great rock band behind me. We're all boogieing. But while we stop boogieing for one moment, we're going to talk to the great House Republican Conference Chair, Ms. Elise Stefanik. Elise, thank you for coming on. It's great to be with you, Larry. I, you know, I have a lot of things to talk about, but as somebody who's lived in New York on and off for about 50 years, you're saying to me that Donald Trump could conceivably carry New York? Really? Really? That's right, Larry. And that's what I said at the convention floor. If you look in every swing district, Donald Trump is pulling ahead. These were districts that Joe Biden won by 15, 17 points. Donald Trump is ahead in each of those swing districts. And within the state, he's within single digits. This shows that he is growing the Republican Party. And as we saw in the midterms, it was New York that delivered the House Republican majority. Well, that's right. And we saw Lee Zeldin's exceptional run for governor. Right. It is moving in the Republican direction. And President Trump is, there is enthusiasm behind his candidacy. So I believe he will be the first Republican president in two generations to potentially win New York State. Who was the last Republican? Was it Reagan? It was Reagan. Yeah. And our last statewide official was Governor George Pataki. Pataki yeah. So it's been at least one generation since we've won statewide. Steve Forbes and I helped design his tax cut. And, yes. he, and he implemented the tax cut. And then later on, George uh, had me, uh, he, he, I was a, a, um, running a commis special commission on tax reform. And uh, the Democrats uh, hated it for it, but that's life in the fast lane. Uh, Elise Stefanik, um, we talked earlier in the show, it's high time the Democrats, Joe Biden, the Democrats, stop this nonsense that um, Donald Trump is an existential threat to democracy. High time. That is inflammatory. Now, the part and parcel of that is the Democratic DEI, okay? And I'm arguing, and I have all along, that DEI is the progenitor of this wave of anti Semitism who has found itself in the center of the Democratic Party, and you stood up on this, and I want you to please tell me some thoughts here. Well, absolutely, Larry. We've seen, as we've conducted oversight of our higher ed institutions with that now infamous congressional hearing with the former presidents of Harvard, Penn, and MIT, when we see this anti-Semitic rot, the DEI agenda is propping up anti-Semitism and propping up anti-Americanism. Take the case of Harvard. Even prior to the October uh, attacks from Hamas on Israel, there were hundreds of Jewish students who reached out to the office of DEI. They did not even get a response. So it just shows that in the root of DEI is anti-Semitism. And we are a nation that's based upon merit, that's based upon excellence, that's based upon the American dream. And the DEI radical far left agenda is crushing that American dream. And I think that is why you're seeing President Trump and the Republican Party support continue to grow among all Americans, all different groups, African American historic support, Hispanic American historic support. So it's a really exciting time to be here in Milwaukee. He is, you know, he's putting together a coalition of working folks, blacks, Hispanics, Asians, young people, women. That's the, the Democrats are scared to death about that. I think, you know, it's part of this whole cancel culture business. It lacks common sense. It goes against traditional middle class values that we're all brought up with. And the Democrats want to transform this into some crazy DEI cancel culture big government socialism. And you touched upon a really important group, young voters. Yes. Look at Joe Biden yes. struggling with young voters. President Trump continues to make inroads with young voters. I am technically a millennial. I was born in 1984. I just turned 40. But those young voters are seeing the economy is crushing us, the highest rate of inflation in our lifetime, the inability for young families to purchase their first home. So people are feeling the impact. Young families and young professionals are feeling the negative impact of failed Biden economics. And they compare that with these strength under President Trump's very strong pro-America economic agenda. Trump's going to give him a raise. Biden gave him a pay cut. That is exactly right. That's the way I look at it. Today's wealth and economy, today, not really. Reagan called it take-home pay. Trump's going to give him a raise. Biden gave him a pay cut. Exactly. And pay cuts always lose. Elise Stefanik, thank you for your leadership on all these issues. We appreciate it very much.